another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And oh, look at that. It's the end of the month. So Karioth is here. But before we get into that, if you want to support the podcast because you love these episodes so much, consider heading on over to patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous where you can get access to the Discord, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all all of our posters in crispy HD digital format. Ooh, it's great. And apparently we have a new bonus poster. Wait, really? This is, this is the first I am hearing of a new bonus poster. I, what is... Oh, uh, also, I, I'm in Boston in a hotel room right now. Sorry if I sound funny. What's the new bonus poster? I have literally no idea. Oh! That's pretty good. Wow! That's pretty good. It's a Detective Ridiculous poster of D.B. Cooper. It's just, it's just D.B. Cooper. It's just, it's, it's just D.B. It's, Cooper. It's literally just D.B. Cooper. Yeah, he's just, yeah. That's great. Um, it's not around to complain about it, so. Or is he? That, we, well, know. that we know, know of. of. How do you know? He might be just living the good life. Well, hot damn. With his adjusted for inflation $2 million? Is that is that how much it is actually? That's like uh, not as when, much when as it, I thought it would be. When it, when it happened, I think it was like oh, I forget. God, that episode was a while ago. I guess he just kind of robbed a plane. He didn't like he didn't like take over like the Bank of America or anything. Yeah, yeah, no, no. Yeah, hey, yeah. new poster! Yay! Well, Yay! by the time this episode is up, it will be live and purchasable over at orchidate dot com. Link in the description. Right. Wahoo! I like how they made sure not to have him wearing a tie because he he left his tie in the in the plane. Oh yeah, he did. That's a nice little detail that That's you made a touch. sure not to put the tie on him because yeah, that is a touch. That is a good touch. Very nice, very nice. And the well, shoot hasn't gone off yet because who knows? Maybe it, they never found one. Yeah, maybe maybe that shoot isn't going to go off. <laughs> yeah, maybe he's. <laughs> Anyway, what's it. the topic, Kyria? <laughs> right. <laughs> Second so, time's the charm. We're gonna we're gonna do something a little bit different. We're not gonna do a quote this time. Instead, I'm oh, gonna ask you. Oh, thank you, Kyria. Lord, my God. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. We're gonna spring in with a, a very important, possibly very exposing question as to how your minds work, because you are both gonna have to answer, probably not simultaneously, because that'll be a mess audio wise, but. Let's. I'll tell you what, let's start DK. You, oh, man. You have a planet, your own planet, your own world. Oh, a full boy. world. Uh-huh. It could have started out however you like. You could have maybe had like some sort of forge world, maybe an agri world. You could have a pleasure world if you want. Okay. But you get to form that world into whatever you like. You can choose how the people live. You can <laughs> choose what the scenery is like. <laughs> You can do pretty much anything you want with that world. What do you do? I do not deserve that power, my friend. I'm just gonna, I don't deserve that power. Um, you want it full of cat girls? Absolutely fine. Just, you know. Oh, I'll, I'll definitely have a cat girl entourage for sure. Um, honestly, I would probably have a... I mean, I guess it would be like a pseudo pleasure world, but it'd be like a vacation planet. And and I would try and make it as tropical and like island vibes as possible. I would essentially make it planet Hawaii. Um, you know, lots of lots of coastal space. So it'd be like a I'd probably terraform it. So lots of ocean, lots of like islands and stuff, and lots of big mountains and lots of good scenery. And you know, I I I would make a paradise planet, and and the citizenry can just you know. Chill out with pina coladas and uh, hula dancers. That sounds yeah. incredibly wholesome and well adjusted. So, good, thank good an- you. That's that's a good answer. That's a good answer. Okay. Yeah. Bricky, same question. Your own world. You can do whatever you like. What do you go for? Death world. <laughs> Straight <laughs> off the bat. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. Um, I probably go something. I probably try to find a a less uh hostile. Um, industrial hive world. Um, I, I mean, granted, I would do like, okay. 
I'm I'm picking a different answer because DK's answer is clearly the the correct answer. It's the nice, lovely, good life world that I would want to be in. But I'm I'm imagining on. Right. I like but I would imagine that this is my world, therefore I'm the planetary governor, and therefore the the Imperium needs something from me, and my job is to provide them with some kind of tithe. And so I'm trying to take a okay. How can I have a good world for myself that's realistic in the world of 40K? And so I, I'd imagine it's some kind of export-based hive city, um, probably one of those planet-wide ones. Uh, but I, I'd hope that maybe the export is something that's that's less hazardous, perhaps um, like either medicine or, or some kind of like stimulant or, dr- or drug. You know what? I want to be a recaf, a recaf hive world. <laughs> my i am i am a coffee exporter and i provide specific types of recaf that is not just delicious nice. but also uh has other mental stimulating effects and so those guards and regiments that get my recaf actually perform better in combat i actually love that answer you you're you have a coffee hive world basically that's I have a coffee great hive answer, world actually I'm I imagining like that answer a lot. I'm imagining because I'm I'm looking out the window into the into the hub uh, of Boston right here, the and, <laughs> and I'm like I'm like seeing how they're doing all the infrastructure in Seaport, and it's all like level one through three are shops and, and restaurants and all kinds of stuff, and everything, and levels four through twenty five are leasing condos, apartments, living spaces, and I'm just imagining that consistently. Um, you know, add in a little bit of religious zeal and add in a little bit of crime and uh, bada bing. You know, you got a good Warhammer world right there. And I, so long as I have really good recath, I won't get murdered by the Inquisition. That's true. And since you're since it's just recaf, it's not like you're going to be the target of like chaos. It's not like chaos is going to show up and be like, we must secure the recaf. You know, I don't think chaos much cares. Yeah, exactly. So you wouldn't be a prime target, but you're still really important to the Imperium. That's a solid answer. No, you're 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 missing you're missing the point, DK. I don't think they care if I'm a prime target or not. I think they're going to kill me for the sake of it. Oh well, okay, that's (laughs) That's actually also fair. fair. Okay, that's yeah, yeah. yeah, If they just stumble upon your planet, they don't care what your export is. They're just eating you and sending your soul. That yeah, that okay. You're right. Yeah, okay. The Tau might not care, and thank God for that. Well, I mean, to be honest, those are both very wholesome, very sensible answers, and they would both be, I think, incredibly, incredibly useful in the 40k universe. <laughs> Shy, I would make planet-sized Cleveland where rivers are on fire, everyone has 20 felonies, and industry produces military-grade depression. You can check out at any time, but you can never leave. Okay. That- Welcome! She's making Planet Hotel California! I get the that reference, is- Shy. I get the reference. It's actually a perfect answer, because today we're going to talk about demon worlds. Because funnily enough, when demon princes get hold of worlds, they don't do what either of you did. They tend to go a little bit, a little bit left field with it, usually. No way! You're telling me demon lords do demony things when they get control of a planet that they can form to their will? Oh, sir, they get sir. Real weird with it. Sir, let's, let, let's, let's not bunch every demon into one box i'm sure some oh, of them have sorry have a bit more fun oh the plague planet never mind <laughs> picture of planet really los, los angeles. angeles no 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 that's that's uh that's more the inland empire that's yeah, planet not... i.e yeah because that's, that's, that's where all UK, of los basically. angeles's pollution goes it just it just furrows down the mountains and then just <laughs> gets no dude that's that's pittsburgh Oh sure, Pittsburgh too. Sure, yeah. Whatever. Yeah, we'll do Pittsburgh. Yeah, the, ru- the, ru- the rust bucket. Yep. A little off the rails, but anyway. <laughs> I mean, look, the way the episode started, it was it was bound to happen. So <coughs> we're gonna we're gonna talk about about demon worlds because there are some incredibly weird ones out there, and the nice the best the best thing about them is that no two really are the same. So. The way you get a demon world to begin with is to just take a normal, you know, functional planet. I mentioned like agri worlds and forge worlds and stuff because it can literally be any planet, and then you just ram it through a warp storm. Oh, that usually does what? the trick. 
So you end up with this fairly normal place that usually has citizens and people living there, and then they get hit with a warp storm or they get stuck in a warp rift, at which point you've got all of the kind of real tangible uh like world itself like the physical the physical universe mixed with all the impossible nonsense that the warp brings and oh. fairly frequently they stop being like bound by the laws of physics you will have demon princes taking control of said world full wars will be fought between the four gods of chaos like their followers <clears throat> to see who gets control of said world which you know is also incredibly bad for whoever happens to be living there at the time. Um, yeah. So if you've just been minding your own business and your world gets caught in a warp rift, then you might suddenly find that what was previously quite a nice place to live is now massively overrun by all four gods' followers as they wage a massive, unending, bloody war to just make your life as miserable as as not even physically possible as like miserable as physically impossible quite often yeah because it's as metaphorically possible but yeah (laughs) if your whole planet gets stuck in like because it it sounds like this is just like up planet up we accidentally shoved you through the warp wouldn't everybody kind of like die from that define die sir (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, t- like when when a ship goes into the warp to travel, like if you're not protected by a Geller field, don't you just like melt? Well, what depends on what the gods have in store for you. It oh. it's, it tends to be much worse than that. So like, so just- I know okay. So I know what you're thinking, DK. I, you're you're referencing the second Night Lord's book, where all the yeah. Red Corsairs on the outside of the ship yeah, yeah, they yeah. translate they just, into the warp, and then warp waves just like tear them apart at a yeah, molecular yeah, yeah, level. Yeah, yeah. And that one guy only survives because you know, right? Exactly. He's... That one guy survives and turned into a possessed. Well, yeah, because he was like literally possessed by Nurgle, right? Well, that that's that's the concept, like. It's the warp who goddamn knows what's going to happen to you. You might just disintegrate. You're, you might get turned into a giant oh. mass. You might become five. It's the warp, man. Oh, so, oh, okay. I, I, I guess I figured like the warp was just like, yeah, you better not go in there unprotected because it's going to turn you inside out and play jump rope with your intestines while feeding them back to you or something. I mean, well, there is th- that Look, might happen too, but you yeah, know, that too. <laughs> That or that or you end up, you know, staying in the warp for what feels like centuries and centuries, slowly starving to death, and then the ship somehow gets chucked out again, and it turns out that you've only been gone thirty seconds. All sorts of fun and incredibly not fun things can happen. But when it comes to an entire planet, there is actually an example of it. So there's a nice bit of, of information on a demon planet called Golia Seven. Which technically, I think, is classed as a as a dead planet now, but <laughs> for reasons that will become clear, um, painfully obvious, I'm sure. Yeah. So they're heading for the feast of the Emperor's Ascension, and at noon on that day, there is an issue with the entire planet skies where they become like blood red. Oh, great! Three days later, it starts raining blood. The planetary right. governor has no idea what's going on, tries to calm the population down, but of course the population is not going to calm down because it's literally raining blood raining on them. Raining blood, yeah. It's, a, yep. it's slayers, right? It, yep. Um, there's, a, there's a council meeting, they try and work out what's happening, and they realise that the world is basically heading directly into a warp storm. Or at least a warp storm is, like the path is passing across the world itself. So then they demand to know why the astropaths haven't said anything to them, because this is something that they could have done with, you know, battening down the hatches on, getting things in place to stop the population from rioting and going insane. Mm-hmm. Or, but, or depending on how cowardly your planetary governor is, getting leaving. on a ship and leaving. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. abandoned ship. Yeah, I was going to say, if they knew earlier, they probably all would have just left. But there was no warning of it, so they went to find the astropaths, because weirdly, they were not at the meeting itself, which they should be, and uh, they did find them. They found them. heads exploded? Oh, no, it's way worse than that. All the blood was drained from every orifice, 
It's very specific about that. Ouch. And their bodies were locked and like twisted in place and they were still screaming. So oh. they were not having a great time either. They weren't doing so well. Yeah, so, they are sometimes not having a good time. Sometimes people forget that like while corn might be blood death murder, corn still does like weird warp stuff that might feel like possession and magic. Like things like that, like just let's just drain yeah. all their blood. Yeah. Yay. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's bad. Yes, watch her in the rain, shy. Um so yeah, so there's it starts out rough, but it does get worse, so it's okay. The the planetary defense force is mobilized. They try and, you know, actually get this world defended from what could be an invasion when the warp storm hits. They don't really know what's coming. They just know that this is really, really bad. So they do fortifications. They just create miles and miles of siege works outside the outside the major cities of the planet. And it is protected by literally millions and millions of soldiers. They have got like over 100, I think it's 180 or 150 million soldiers on that world in the Planetary Defense Force, you know, Damn. keeping it safe, in inverted commas. But nothing happens. It just continues to rain blood day after day. The soldiers dream of torture. They start to feel like pain and suffering. And so they start abandoning their posts. And then they start having to mass execute deserters because they just start leaving and they don't want anything to do with it. Oh. That's not even the third week. <laughs> By the time you get to the third week, oh. you've got huge like congregations of like prophets and and people proclaiming like the end of the world, saying that the god emperor has abandoned them and has like damned them because they're all faithless. The people doing this were initially it's like, okay, well we need to we need to leave these as much as we can, only send in like police and our bites to try and to try and sort it out, but it was far too late for that. It then turned into just battles between, essentially, cultists that had started to rise up, mm -hmm. and the planetary defense force just constantly fighting. Then, because the soldiers heard about it, they started manning the uh, like they started leaving the trenches, which were now full of blood because it was raining blood for three weeks, Eesh. and just abandoning their posts. So all the defensive lines were just completely empty. <laughs> At which point, the warp storm finally actually hits the planet. There's lightning split in the sky. There's nightmares that join form and like just incorporate themselves into reality to start slaughtering things. A good number of the population are just driven mad instantly. Then oh. the ones who go mad become like almost gods amongst men so what they think of becomes reality and then as the warp storm properly engulfs the planet like fully mm -hmm. hundreds of millions of people just started to butcher each other in some sort of blood frenzied rage oh wow <laughs> and and then and then the ground just falls apart underneath them Fountains of gore sweep out, just taking everyone away, the dead, the dying, the still alive, and the last person on the planet to die just heard laughing before oh. they were killed as their sanity was got rid of. And then there was nothing left on the world. It was just gone. <laughs> it was dead. Oh, damn. Completely. I th I oh. thought you were going to say the oh, last wow. person became a demon prince because they were strong enough to survive. <laughs> I mean that 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 would be a fair guess, but sheesh, would yeah, have been a better uh, would have been a better fate, I think. Yeah, that's, that's oh, definitely no, that's that's no planet Hawaii, that's for sure. But that's so the this kind so of thing this is to look forward to um, if there's a warp gravy. storm engulfing your planet. So <laughs> holy jeez, that's I mean the the raining blood for three weeks was the good part. That was oh the, yeah, that was that, that was, was the nice the bit. <laughs> calm before the storm, as it were. Yikes! You know, Yikes. I, it's kind of I like okay. So here's the thought process: Could they have actually even done anything? There's no way, right? Oh, that almost was... certainly not. No. Okay, <laughs> I was like, they probably could have left. Like, this is planet-wide evacuation. 
Um, and, and yeah, okay. How, how what was the time frame? You said like four weeks. Yeah, it was. It was basically in this in the span of in the span of a month. The, it went from a normal world to uh, a dead world that briefly became a demon world as it started reacting to the warp and the people living there. Yeah, and and, and they they don't even understand like what chaos is most of the time. So this probably really took them off guard. Oh yeah, yeah. for these people, like it, it was probably just oh yeah, this is hell. Like we've died and gone to hell. We're just gonna suffer, and yeah, because yeah, most of the regular citizenry don't know anything about the warp and chaos and anything outside of their little planet, aside from oh boy, the emperor's great. And the people <laughs> you need to try and get assistance, as as Shice pointed out, they're either dead or so insane they can't actually use their abilities to do anything. True to call for any sort of assistance. Are- <laughs> yeah, the astropaths are still screaming about that whole being, uh, you know, locked into place and having all the blood from every orifice pour out of their body. <laughs> what, uh, what, what, what honestly, holiday, is it? probably yeah. be better that you didn't try to help him, though, because I feel like if you try to shake an astropath, like, wake up, we need you, he would just blow your head off. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Probably best <laughs> to leave the astropath alone. It'd go, it'd go bad. It would definitely go bad, possibly for both of them. Potentially, mm-hmm. um, yeah, sure. But that that is that could be classed as like a not too bad fate when it comes to demon worlds. That's oh. that's one of the reasons I brought it up early because it, it's because horrific dead, and everyone died. But yeah, you're not alive to suffer because in 40k there are fates way worse than death. Yes. Oh yeah, it, it, no! It could actually be worse than that. So <laughs> oh, no. sometimes there'll be there'll be occasions where demon worlds are like in real space for enough time that they can be visited by agents of the Imperium. So like inquisitors might be able to uh, might be able to like land a party or examine a world, um, and that's where like in universe where a lot of the kind of imperium knowledge of them comes from so there are some worlds that are just an absolute like like just a cauldron of fighting where it's just each chaos god has got followers who are attempting to take that world over for themselves or maybe the world is taken over kind of on like a cycle so it might be that for a while it's taken over by nurgle and so it has certain almost symptoms of being taken over by nurgle like kind of lush gardens that emit poison where everyone on it is just permanently diseased or wasting away. But then it might be that somehow, either th- either through war or through just influence, Corn gains control of that world, at which point it's just one massive like gladiatorial combat sort mm-hmm. of session going on. Yeah, reflects the um, chaos god that uh, has control over it. Yes, it's it's very dependent on on which like facet of chaos currently has a hold over that world. Um, so there's 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 things like you know inquisitors getting groups together, being able to go and examine these worlds up close, of people being like hunted down by demons over over terrain that just constantly changes, mm, issues lovely. with being attacked or you know confronted with the deep nightmares or worst fears that people might have seeing family and loved ones die no natural law so things like floating mountains just being a thing or Mm -hmm. rivers of blood or wine if it's a slanesh world loads of completely impossible and like improbable instances that shouldn't be a thing where this planet is if it's gone back into real space for a bit, but it's still kind of affected by whatever entity has control over it. Um, and yes, one of the one of the example ones of just how completely, I guess, nonsensical Demon Worlds can be um, is there is a world called Oliensis, which okay. is a planet... Except it's not fully a planet. It's in the Eye of Terror, and it's actually just a massive, morbidly obese guy in the Oh, it's position. the big dude! I've, yes. I've heard, okay, I've heard about this a million times, but I've never actually seen it. 
Wait, it's so it, it's not actually a planet. It's just like a a, a massive dude. Yeah, it's just a big obese man who is in a fetal position and is the size of a planet. And noise marines live in his paws. Yeah, this, I was about to say this is, a, this is a slanesh coated planet if I've ever seen one. Oh, sure. Yes. Ex- well, I guess it, to the max, right? It could be Nurgle, I suppose, but you know. Yeah, it could be. Well, if it was shooting out boils and disease and burping rot, yeah, it, it, it could be. Shy said it's your mom, Bricky. How are you gonna are you gonna really say that about your mom? Uh, he, she just said it's your mom. There are three separate people here that that comment could have gone towards. Yeah, but I was assuming she was talking to you because my mom is a saint. And uh, you're telling and me that my mom isn't? No, I'm just assuming that Shy's being very mean to you. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. So yeah. <laughs> there was an attempt. There was a, just for a moment a temptation <laughs> to say that that. <laughs> That mine's no longer with us, but that would be a lie. So I, I decided not to. Um, That's okay. There's. It's not just Alensis though, because Oliensis is is. It's really weird, really creepy. Just a guy floating in space, but is also a planet. People living in the pores itself. It's how, not the how, only how one. Did, how did that happen exactly? Just weird Slanesh. warpy chaos Slanesh stuff turned a dude into a ju- like is is that a is, do you need a special dude for that or is it just like oh yeah it's just some dude <laughs> you we need he's forever make and- it sound like you need one specifically that can be inflated <laughs> to the right size <laughs> he's, he's like, special all right you buy that from like I, I know i know chaos and the warp don't really have any like tangible rules or laws like physics go right out the window uh but like there's no like ritual or anything it's just slanesh is like yeah this person they just you would like okay i like to think the concept that this this is the morbidly obese person but like their head has stayed the same size so it's somewhere <laughs> on the planet this tiny lump with a the face head. just a normal just a size normal. head and, <laughs> and the rest of them has just been increased this i mean there there is I'd there like is some imagine... fetish happening here you you know in old timey cartoons where you've got the tire pump and they put it in like the guy's mouth and they keep pumping it and pumping it and he turns into a balloon. Uh, I like to believe that that's how Slanesh does it. Now that that I I'm on board. I'm right? on board with that idea. Like yeah. the the old timey yeah. cartoon one where they just keep inflating and inflating and then you know. Yeah. See, I that, I'm that works for me. I'm imagining like much like how a demon prince is. You know, you you do something crazy good for chaos, and then you become a demon prince, and then they they reward you. I imagine this guy was like was like grade A worker, employee of the year, years over. You know, he was he was just this one guy that Slush was like, you know what, man? Yeah, you know what? Yeah, like he like gave <laughs> like he like single handedly like took down a punishment. craft world or something. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure how this is a I reward. I feel like this though. isn't a reward. I feel like this is a punishment, isn't it? That's hard to. It's hard to tell. <laughs> With Slash, it's, yeah, it's always I mean, hard actually, to tell yeah, what's to a fair. punishment and what's a reward, right? There, there, there's fair. that. I think with I think with all of them, I think with all of them, that's kind of true, isn't it? True, it's like, yeah. But with Slash, Zinesh- especially, because who knows what a Slanesh worshiper would think was punishment or reward? Yeah, okay. that's, that's fair. <laughs> to, to to go back a second, I remember this because this was a relic in 9th edition 40k called the Endless Grin. It is a fleshy mask of the still living flayed face of a man who begs Slanesh to fulfill his wish to live forever. The Dark Prince was oh. only too pleased to oblige, gifting the unfortunate soul immortality, but also forcing to present his face to the Chaos Lord Shikse. After murdering the supplicant, Shikse wore the face as a prized reminder of the occasion for several centuries. The Endless Grin has since exchanged hands many times, but the potency of its anguish has never diminished. Ah, chaos. So, you know, whether it's a blessing or a curse is a great question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Warp shenanigans. (laughs) It's just like chaos. Chaos shenanigans. Lovable scamps. You ask for one thing, you sort you get of get another. it in a horrific way. Yay. <laughs> the old the old monkey paw, right? 
Shai has a better story. He was some starving peasant on a hive world, and he wished he would be uh, as fat as a planetary governor, and Slanesh rewarded him with endless stomach, and he ate entire population of his planet and became planet-sized. Actually, I don't hate yeah, that explanation. I, 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 like I think that. that's, that's actually a... Yeah, that's, that's good. A, that's a fair explanation. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. That that sounds extremely sl- like that would be an Ace Slanesh Codex, one hundred percent. Yeah, that definitely. sounds very similar to what happened to the the endless smile, right? He was like, "Oh boy, I want to live forever," and it's like, "Well, here's your wish." Chuckle, chuckle. So, what Thanks. other what other demon worlds do you got here? Because uh, I I know I know of two specifically, actually oh, three. There's there's, but, there's there's a bunch. The thing is, he's not he's not the only like big lad in space. So so when when Shy mentioned him, he's not the only big lad in space. He's not. He's not the only one. There's also. Is I maybe could have phrased that a bit more. Uh, that's yeah, how it is. Um, there's also one called Pluvioris, which is kind of similar in that it's another kind of gigantic person floating mm. around. However, this one doesn't have noise marines living in the pores. This one. Has people living on its surface, so he still has people actually living on him. And oh. when the when Pluvioris dreams, it like writhes around in in pleasure and pain. And the people who live on the surface are people who are effectively being punished for like only chasing their dreams. Oh. So. They then end up living on this planet that's actually, you know, a big lad in space. And whilst they're there, they've been cursed to live there. And while they're there, their imaginations kind of uh, are kind of forced to to run wild. And every time they imagine like a new a new fear or something that they are like horribly afraid of, that thing is birthed by the planet, crawls out of the nearest pore to the person who imagined the awful thing, and then goes and murders them. Oh! It's just wow. it's just the Stephen King It planet. Pretty, pretty yeah, much. you're right. Yeah, that is basically Stephen King's It, the planet. They don't yeah, even get I, to I, die at I, the I, end of it because they crawl out <laughs> of his mouth next night so they get murdered by the thing they're scared of then they are themselves brought back to life to get murdered by a new thing that they're scared of all over again (laughs) oh wow really so so even if they get killed on this planet they just get rebirthed just so they can endlessly die again the stuff that they're afraid of yes would this would this be a a zinchian or a slaneshian coded planet it feels zinchian for me it feels zinchian yeah Mm. It, it's it, there's a few that are like not a hundred percent on kind of which which god it's currently controlled by. Um, that is one of the ones where I wasn't a hundred percent sure whilst I was looking at these. Um, I just know that it was absolutely grim. <laughs> I was just like, oh dear god, yeah. that's and and awful. people are sent to live on this planet as a punishment for like doing something bad or whatever, or just because, haha, this will be funny. It's it's they've cha- they've spent their entire lives chasing their dreams, but they have a lack of faith, which is quite a nebulous, quite a nebulous uh, sort of description. It's from it's from a White Dwarf article from oh, a okay. while ago, I think it was White Dwarf two eight two, which was <laughs> quite a while. Yeah, because I was going to say there's no way you would choose to live on this planet <laughs> or on this person. So, oh no, yeah, no I think none has of them to be do. a punishment. <laughs> Yeah. I think none of them do. Um, the, the, as an example, just a place that you would never, ever want to be in any way, shape, or form. Uh, there is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. I'm going to put it. I'm going to put it in. Okay. So that I'm going to give it a go. All right. Then All right. you tell me why is it put that as an image. You tell me if you think I've got this right. It, you Garnak. You I, You know what I would say? I, I think I'd say you, Yarnak. Yarnak? I think the I think the H is silent. I'd say you Garnak. You Garnak? I would have gone Yarnak. You garlic. The garlic planet. The garlic That's planet. Close enough. <laughs> Yagernak. 
I just quite like Yaga. Why, why did you? Why did you sound like like a like an anime character, like learning something new? It's like no way, Yaganarak. Yeah, that's like the that's like the the way the the dub says it. Like the anime's like Yarnak, and then the dub's like Yagernak. You know? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so so what is this plan? Does it like does it like shit flies or something? It's yeah. not. It's 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 relatively um it's it's relatively clean. Um because it's not technically a world. It's a vast collection of like cages that are made from bronze bars that are permanently scorching hot. And inside oh. every cage is a person. And that well, person is there because they've they've drunk someone else's blood. <laughs> and okay. if they were witnessed doing that by by one of the chaos gods, they get to stay in one of the burning cages forever. And the only way that they can stop it from burning them is to uh, is to is to put their own blood all over the bars. Oh, so and this is this is the just the, the the brazen bull. It is the brazen bull, but in like actual actual planet size. Some brazen it's, bullshit. That's strange because you you'd think a chaos god would not care if someone was just drinking blood. Also, it is kind of not a very corn thing to like torment these people. That's not always no. like his shtick. Though yeah, I guess if he's just trying to get more the... blood. Well, that's yeah. But yeah, that no, that's weird. It doesn't seem like most chaos gods would give a goddamn if they found one of their followers drinking blood. That seems like a very normal chaosy thing to do. Then again, it's also very chaos to encourage a thing and then just not reward you for it or <laughs> and to then openly punish you go for said thing. Yeah. yeah. On the other hand, no. Like that's that feels that feels very that feels I mean, very fair. chaos. Fair. Yeah, you're right. You're right. What what was I thinking? I keep thinking there are laws and rules. It's chaos in the warp. Nope. All yeah, that shit is out the window. It's anybody's ball game. The rules change. The points are made up, and they don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> the points change. The rules don't. There's there's no rules. The points change, and the people don't matter. Is probably the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah. For some reason, I keep thinking there's some set of bylaws in chaos. There's not. They don't. I, I like who's they're, they're in it. They're in it for shits and giggles, and that's what they're going to go for every yeah. single time. <laughs> Sp- speaking of shit, uh, you got a Nurgle planet for us. We've done some good, like of the other gods. Mm. Oh yeah. Oh, there's. <laughs> let let me let me find it because there's there's a great oh, no, this there's is a great be Nurgle so planet. Gross, isn't it? This is going to be awful. This is going to be like <laughs> I, a literal planet that's just a floating hunk of shit or something. I, I don't know why. You'd, I don't know why you'd assume that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we can. I mean, there is there is. Plague Planet, which is hands down the least imaginatively named demon world, which probably is probably the most the... accurately descriptive. Oh well, it is where Mortarian lives, so oh, well, it's yeah. it's the home world of uh, of the Death Guard, and it is absolutely full of beast men for a start, but like diseased beast men that are covered in flies. And they absolutely love it. They love being diseased and covered in flies. And they have, like, full on kind of, yeah, well, I think you'll find I've got three more diseases than you have. That sort of attitude <laughs> to them. Um, other than that, it's actually not that, it's actually not that crazy compared to, compared to some of them. Um, yeah, that sounds like Nurgle Paradise. Like, if you have been corrupted by Nurgle, that sounds like Paradise. It's like, oh yeah, we are just rotting in our own filth. We're covered in disease, and we love it because we're Nurgle. And why wouldn't we love it? And hooray! At least you know we're not in bars that are tormenting us forever. We we'd love to bathe in our own shit. So yeah, if 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 you're Nurgle, that sounds like Planet Hawaii. I mean, they do have Nurgle. Another another Nurgle um, demon world does have a uh, have a ring of people dancing around the equator. So there's like permanently a, okay. a massive chain of humans that just sings and dances the whole time, praising Nurgle as they circle the planet, and as they go round and round, they they get Nurgle's rot. 
which causes them to then turn into plague bearer demons at which point the plague bearer then leaves to go and join nurgle and new humans take their place which it sounds really jolly <laughs> like it genuinely I mean... sounds like they're having a whale of a time by comparison to what we've already heard, I, you know, that's I'll take that over, you know, infinite death at the thing that you're most scared of for all eternity or being I mean, in a basically a brazen bull. I mean, it is kind of Nurgle's thing, though, right? His, he's all he's very jolly. I always remember that one story of the I think it was either it was Vrax or maybe the other one where a great unclean one would run up and then just like projectile vomit into a crater left by artillery shells and all the nurglings would be like yay pool and then start like playing in it oh yeah and, yeah a kiddie <laughs> pool of vomit yeah yeah and it's just like that's just that's just nurgle that's just what yeah. he's about they're yeah. just having a great time there is uh there is anathrax as well another nurgle planet um that is <clears throat> that's a bit more weird to be fair because there's loads of like mushrooms and fungus all over the planet that are actually heads with kind of puffy eyes and they just permanently cough and sneeze mucus all over the planet and anyone who touches it immediately gets corrupted Ew. so land some space marines on there and uh, if they touch it they will most likely be corrupted and turned into a band of chaos space marines well that 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 sucks but still not as bad as all that other stuff it's it's not like I really feel like Nurgle Nurgle when it comes to demon worlds that it's not the worst. There are definitely there are definitely worst ones to uh, to 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 be on. Um, oh yeah, and the disease factories for the plague planet. So there's just literal <laughs> factories making diseases. Sprawling abominations of gurgling pipes, bubbling vats, belching smokestacks, and rusted cages cramming with test subjects and living ingredients. <laughs> Which is damn even Amazon plague has, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bezos is really expanding. Wow. Who knew but, he was a fan of Nurgle all along? Um, who knew? Who knew? I always thought it was Slanesh with all that excess. <laughs> Again, I it's still not the worst. I mean, there's a few that are just absolutely horrendous. Ikoria is another one. Um Ikoria is is an interesting one because it doesn't rely on like out and out torture. There's still a bit of torture going on. It's still not great if you're a human, mm. but Ikoria is made of glass and bone. And there are forests that are just covered in in humans that have sold their souls oh. to try and get like rich so if if they've kind of chased fortune at the expense of everything else then they are kind of cursed to end up hanging in these glassed forests and every 999 Whoa. days one of them one of them is returned to their normal life as if nothing had ever happened However, however, they do remember their time on the demon world of Ikoria, and so eventually, usually in a matter of days, they go insane, which the demon oh. prince who rules it finds really, really funny, and that's literally the only reason that he does it. Because <laughs> they can so, go free, and it's like, oh, hooray, I'm free, but their time on Ikoria just makes them go absolutely stir-crazy, and they die regardless. Yes. Yeah, it's it's all about the false hope and it's all mm -hmm. about the idea to the rest of the the rest of the captives on the demon world that one day I could I could be free. But then as soon as you're freed, you've got yep. at least at least nine hundred and ninety nine days of agonizing torture just still in your memory. I, I imagine the demon prince is like in this really big, like lazy lazy boy. <laughs> recliner with like a nightcap and a, and a thing of coffee and he's just like watching the person who gets saved and they slowly start screaming and he just spits out his mashed potatoes like <laughs> <laughs> so you said Ikori is made of glass and bone yep is there a picture of that because that sounds like it'd be a dope looking planet 
I couldn't find one, but it oh. does sound like one of the coolest ones. Yeah, that sounds like it'd be a rocking looking planet. It also doesn't oh. help that it's also a type of moth, which sort of <laughs> interferes with Google image search results a little bit. Um, I said it's most- like her knees. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Grandma, back to bed. I yeah, have glass bones like and text paper text skin. And white dwarf and stuff, so. <laughs> yeah, that, that, God, that sounds like it'd be such a cool looking planet. Oh, well. The uh, that there are there is a, a, a like a nicer one that I'll bring up in a moment, but I think we'd we're best to get one of the other worst ones out of the way first. Okay. So there there is a lot on this on this demon world. Well, on on a character related to the demon world. So there is a demon prince called Gargachuloth, which is what a cool name. <laughs> it's, it's it's quite the name, uh, Zinchian. Um, demon prince, or master, or was it a thingy of change? A thingy of change. You know what I mean. One of those. Um, Is that the technical term too? Greater demon. Sorry, not demon prince. Yeah, it's a technical term. A thingy of change. The thingy um, of change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's my favorite. Yeah, the, the named one is the thingies of change. He has two yeah. heads. Mm-hmm. That's that's how you tell the difference. That's <laughs> the, the way you have the, way the you... two heads. Yeah, exactly. Good good call, Bricky. <laughs> oh, it's been a long day. Right, so. <laughs> Effectively, this this greater demon of Zinch, Gargachuloth, I love saying that. That's a um, great name. It's a great name. Ended up claiming a world called Corian Nine. And on that world, Gargachuloth he did something fairly hardcore, even by the standards of other demon worlds and 40k as a oh. whole. Um kind of had risen up a lot of cultists. And and prophets and the like, and they had been venerating like one of the incarnations of Gargachiloth, and you know singing his praises, trying to draw more people in to worship Gargachiloth. Mm-hmm. And they wanted reward for this. They thought their reward, at least, would be eternal life because that's you know something of a trend in all of this. <laughs> um, Silly boys, and, uh, it's it's never a good idea, is it? Mm-mm. And uh, Gargachiloth is a a greater thingy of his word and gave them eternal life by uh-huh. creating just impossible to count so many torture racks and crosses on which the followers were crucified and kept alive pretty much permanently oh so well. they were all hung up they were screaming and a nice little a nice little kind of indication as to just how grim the whole thing is like the the blood from their torture made the like made the the kind of space between real space and the warp thin and eventually um the inquisition arrived to do something about gargachiloth because he was becoming quite a problem yeah. And when they arrived in orbit around the planet, the screaming of the crucified people was so loud that they could hear it through their ships in orbit. Oh wow. Uh that's a that's 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 a lot. It's yeah. At that bad. point to like did they were were they just like, you know what? No. <laughs> We're just going to leave. We'll right. leave them to it. It's fine. Yeah, Shia was like, I'm turning the ship around. It's like, yeah, you know what? We can hear their screams through the hull. Um, hmm. Nope. I'm This planet is forfeit. Exterminatus, and let's get the fuck out of here. That's definitely uh, a we're leaving moment, right? Of oh, we're leaving. Yeah. We're yeah. leaving. Mm-hmm. Sure. <laughs> it's, I mean, the, I, did, did they actually do anything about it, or did they actually just like, nope? Fuck this shit! I'm out. Oh, there was there was Grey Knights involved. They sorted it out. They okay. sorted it out. Technically, okay. it's now a dead world, not a demon world. So you can oh, you okay. can gather from gotcha. that that it went okay. <laughs> yeah. Now it's just a burn mark. I mean, all the people on it, they didn't make it. But you know, the problem I'm sure as a whole. Pretty happy about that, actually. I mean, you know, <laughs> yeah. when they're yeah, the people didn't make it. Really, the eternal crucified guys didn't make <laughs> yeah. it. Hmm. No. T- tell me more. <laughs> they they were fine with it in the end, though. So yeah, I'm sure. Turns I'm out, sure. real change of heart about the whole 
living <laughs> forever when it's thing, presented yeah. in that way. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there is also there is also Kalax, so that's uh, Fulgrim's world, um, which is the it's named after um, the city on Chemos that that Fulgrim was from, and that one actually sounds like a great place to be, kind of because it's a pleasure planet, and it's all about the unending pleasure, except it is known as the Gardens of Hell, so you <laughs> could argue that that's you know a little bit worrying on the yeah. face of it. It's also described as being not a real planet, and instead it's the shadow of a planet being cast on the light of a dying sun, which sounds hardcore and even more impossible than most chaos-based warp nonsense to me. Yeah, I can't I, even I, I, like. I don't know what that is, but yeah, it sounds. I was going to cool. say you. You said a bunch of words that I didn't quite like. I I, I know what these words mean, <laughs> yeah. but when you put them together, it's like what. What did you just say? <laughs> like, I think I think it's but a it's, it's chaos. Of a like it, it it doesn't need to make sense, right? There's it's no true. laws. It's we true. we've been over this. There's no laws. Nothing applies. Physics right out the window. There's yep. nothing off limits. Yep. Just, just do what you like. It's yeah. It's, it's chaos. It's, Who cares? It's a shadow cast on real space that you can live on. That's a sort of pleasure world. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey, Fulgrim, maybe like, hey, hey, man, I've come to you from the future and like, I'm your bro. Don't pick up that sword. You're not going to like what happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just leave it there. You don't need yeah, the sword. You've got it. a perfectly yeah, good yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. You're like a Primark. You are you are completely OK with just not picking up the sword. <laughs> <laughs> Sound advice from future Fulgrim. Oh yeah, Fulgrim now spends most of his time recreating the old battles that unified his homeworld, fights them repeatedly attempting different strategies in search of the perfect victory to rewrite his history. Sometimes he even allows the enemy to win. Just, you wow. know, for a nice change. It's yeah, a sort of, of course, of course. Which, which is ironic, because seeking that kind of level of perfection is basically just what Slash wants anyway, so... Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Yeah, very much falling into the same traps all over again, isn't he? Mm-hmm. But on that yeah. on that world on Kalax, there is uh, there is a couple of nice little details. So constantly changing because it's not really a real world; it's a shadow on a sun or something. Um, so might have oceans of blood, might have oceans of specifically pomegranate juice. So that's you know, one huh. day you could go for a nice drink by the beach, and it'll be awful the next day. Really tasty. Also. If you uh, if you are a pilgrim and you end up there because you want to worship Fulgrim slash Slanesh, uh, if you stop dancing, then you will be torn apart by demons. So oh, just to know, if you don't like dancing, don't go. I thought you were going to say if you stop dancing, like you'd fall through the shadow and just land into the boiling sun or something, and you just boil alive. And... <laughs> that actually sounds really cool. Right? Like, in order to be on the shadow that's cast over the sun, you have to dance and be merry, and if you stop, foomp, you just right into the star. If I'm not mistaken, there's actually a Slanesh demon known as the Mask of Slanesh that Slanesh has forced to never-endingly dance for all eternity. That sounds yes. super familiar. Yeah, that's that's a, an AOS thing, isn't it? The Mask of Slanesh, or is that? I think I think no, it, I think you can run it in both, basically. Yeah, um, yeah I don't I don't know why they <laughs> I don't know why that happened to them. You know, let's let's look that up. The yeah, mask. So so what. it's mask as an M A S Q U E. Um. Yes. The Mask of Slanesh was once a demonette who was held in the greatest esteem by Slanesh. She danced for joy. Uh, and uh, joint performance and et cetera, et cetera. Let's see. I don't know. I give up. <laughs> it was so quick. It was so quick. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's, really it's long. It was, I thought this was going to be like a one paragraph explanation it, one, but like, it was. You know. It was longer than I thought it was, and I'm like, if, you know, if, I'm still in this hotel. For whatever reason, you don't want to leave that oh. in, Shai, please at least include it as a blooper. That would be oh, just great. God. To just, I give up. Whatever. That's This is too many lines to read. I, nope. I, I've got to stop <laughs> taking, like, sips of water at the wrong moment. Uh, the number of times I've nearly died. That one really... Almost got gotcha. Really hit me. Uh, <clears throat> oh, God. 
<laughs> Shy says she has an explanation, but she's currently typing it, so we need to fill some dead I, time. <laughs> I think I think she basically was like mocked her a little bit. Oh, okay, here it is. Slanesh was in a bad mood, and the mask wanted to improve their mood with a dance. And Slanesh was like, "You are mocking me by Fortnite dancing on my depression <laughs> dance forever." Okay, no, uh, is that, that real? Yep. Well, that's about not right. The Fortnite dancing. Uh, as as they watched the demonette dance her faultless dance, Slanesh saw only a barbed jest at their expense, a subtle mockery aimed at their wounded pride. So could oh, wow, uh, yeah. bear no more and flew into a rage and laid a curse to condemn them to dance without eterni- uh, eternity, unable to rest their limbs or take the merest pause. Wow. Jesus. Yep. So I mean, there's being in a bad mood and then there's that, isn't there? That's, yeah. that's, that's, I, I would argue that something of an overreaction, you know? It's well, like when the, uh, when the king, like the jester is not doing a good enough job and the king is like, uh, off with their head. Yeah. 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 I mean, is that really an overreaction for Slanesh? There's, there's a bit of a, there's a bit of a parallel there with Fulgrim trying to do, uh, trying to do some sculpture and showing it to the really good sculpture guy who, says oh it's too good there aren't any flaws and fulgrim gets all sulky about it and decides that he doesn't like him anymore the really Which, good sculpture guy huh i forget his really name. knocking it out the park with these uh, <laughs> that was technical was that terms. the was that the worst like uh i, I was gonna say you could have <laughs> just said he went to the really good sculptor but y- you're referring to the part in fulgrim the book right yeah, yeah. okay yeah that bit Oh yeah, sculptor. I forgot the name of the. <laughs> oh dear. Oh no. It's, ah yes, the really good. Uh, I need to find me a really good sculpture guy that he might sculpt me a sculpture. <laughs> <laughs> even by my standards, I feel like the like not even the technical terms. Just knowing English has not been great, which is a real shame because it's the only language that I can speak. So that's I, I that's can rough. Relate. That's really rough. Okay. <laughs> this this technically we're going to do something kind of nice. We're going to okay. we're going to talk about one something that is it's still technically kind of <clears throat> demon world-esque. It's it's more of a demon cluster. So there is a there is something called the Rose Cluster which was created by a greater demon of Zinch. Oh. And it's called the Rose Cluster because it is in the shape of a rose, like petals and everything. So suns, planets, all of it is organized into the shape of a rose. It's also pink. Just oh. a nice a nice color of pink. And oh. it's not just the cluster that is in the shape of a rose. Zooming into the cluster and looking at stars, looking at planets, every single star and every single planet is also in the shape of a rose. So an entire section of space with multiple stars, a ton of planets, tens of thousands, possibly, given that it's a full cluster, all made to look like a lovely pink rose, and everything inside is also made to look like a lovely pink rose. And I don't know what life is like on those planets, or even if there is any, but just from the outside... It might be the nicest thing that any demon of any chaos god has ever done. Yeah, I was going to say that that sounds like it's kind of rock star. That actually sounds like it's kind of a neat little cluster to be just like this, you know, galactic rose. That sounds great, but a part of me is worried cuz it's if it's even like all like pink hued, I'm like, well, how do you get that hue? That's a it's probably a lot of blood. <laughs> Immediately probably. goes to. <laughs> probably. I mean, to I mean, it's a fair. chaos thing, right? Like to it's be fair, demon worlds. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you that. I mean, given how awful so many, so many of them are, you kind of have to assume that probably, probably something probably blood. There. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is. It's Zinch, so it's. I mean, it could it could just be that everyone on there is it like. Every person living in that cluster is also been turned into some sort of sentient rose, which is not the worst, but also probably very boring. Yeah. You're, not, you're not thinking Zinchian enough. It's pink to make you think that it's blood, but then when you find out it's not blood, you worry it's Slanesh, but then it's not Slanesh, and Zinch just made it pink because he thinks it's funny. 
<laughs> Fair enough. It's, I mean, that's some Zinchian mind games. So, you know, it's just oh, you know, it's actually a Rosetta cross, Nebula yeah. in real life, which actually is quite quite a beautiful phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's. You know, you know what's a really fun demon world that I like a lot? Wormwood. 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 Yeah, it's what Vashtor turned Caliban into. Oh. Yeah, Vashtor to took took, that one. took right. Caliban, turned it into a gigantic forest of demon gears and and a various other like copper wiring and stuff, and just brought it back and was like. Eat shit, Johnson. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> the actual quote, verbatim. Eat shit, Johnson. That, yeah, that was that was what was written on the note he sent to him afterwards. It was just, <laughs> yeah, a it was just note. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's funny because Vashdor is such like a like a melodical, mechanical kind of person, but he 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 he's not like a Bellacore who actually would I feel like canonically say eat shit, Johnson. But he's he's still he's still a bit of a sassy man. He's not he doesn't like these things. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah, that's that's a demon world technically. Giant world of gears and forests yeah, of demon that, engines. Oh, definitely, yeah, yeah, definitely. And Vashtor made it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did not hear me drop my phone. I actually didn't. <laughs> no, oh, no thank one God. did. <laughs> yeah, oh, I was thank gonna God. say if you hadn't said it, I wouldn't have known, but now we're all judging you because you said it. I well I, I the microphone isn't great, you know, I didn't know. Yeah, well, now now I know you dropped it, and now I'm judging you harshly for being so goddamn clumsy. If we're going to cut that out, can we cut out all the bits where I don't know what words are? Is that is that okay? Or no. would that be too much content cut? Oh, my no. God. Oh, my God, Yugi Yagarnak. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, we're the Yagarnak. How Joey is Wheeler, my beloved. How that than the word sculptor? Like, what, if, what happened? Anyway, so... They can't are, cut uh, out ninety five percent. Fair play, shy. Fair play. I can't even argue with it because it's true. Um, Don't worry, Kiriath. No one, no one will notice that you got all that stuff wrong because I am, <laughs> I am the canonically dumb one. So everybody will concentrate on how stupid I am, and you'll be, you'll be, you'll be clear. <laughs> Don't worry. You'll, you'll clear the allegations. I'll just have to. Man is is not escaping the allegations. <laughs> no. <laughs> the next one is going to be. I'm only going to have scripted responses. And that's going to be it. <laughs> just, oh, then just... we're not inviting you back, man. This is this is the this is the gold of the podcast. Like, come on, we're we're gonna pull a, an AI generated response from your from your voice here. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, if you're not having me back on, we can't have this as the last one. We can't have the one where I can't talk. <laughs> that's that's the worst way to go out. That that's my personal demon world. We can't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to come back. You have to keep coming back. You're stuck here. This is actually your demon world because you have to keep. You know. <laughs> that this, like is, the best this is your place Stephen end, King. You know? This is the this Stephen is King planet world. you have to live on. Yeah. So. Oh God! You need to keep coming back until you get an episode right, but that never happens. <laughs> you just keep. You just keep getting rebirthed. You know. I keep crawling out of the out, out, out of the, the big lad in yeah. space's mouth. <laughs> Little did you know that you were actually on, uh, what was the dude's name again? Pol uh, 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 oh, the obese man. Pol Polarvia or something? or Pluvioris, Pol that's it. Pulvioris, there you go. <laughs> you, you remember that, but sculptor? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the idea of noise marines living in the man's pores just fucking throws me off. Yeah, that's like, so crazy. It's... it's, it's <laughs> When you think about how each individual pore is like the size of a, probably like a city, it's just it's just so weird. It's gross, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, what, like, what does happens he when sweat? that dude sweats? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> brain link. We share oh, a brain no. cell. Wow, look at he's us. So, he's so excited. <laughs> I'm not the only dumb one. Yes. As if we hadn't established that like <laughs> 35 minutes ago. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, what happens when he sweats? Or, or, or like, uh, what happens if he bumps into something and he has to, like, he bleeds or something, you know? Or, I mean, the, the armor's got to be sealed against, like, against atmosphere. So maybe they, do they just, do they just relax in the pool like it's a giant hot tub? Is what even know? is atmosphere on a, on a booth, like, or like, like on like a, like a world <laughs> like that? Does it even have atmosphere? 
I mean, it's the warp. There's probably they can probably be. It, it's probably like air conditioned. They just decide what they want it to be, and that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're living on a on a on an obese guy the that's size true. of a planet. I don't think we need to be worrying about specifically <laughs> yeah. oh, what man. sort of atmosphere there is. <laughs> yeah, the I, obese guy planet. I wonder how the physics of the atmosphere work on it. <laughs> yeah, the the GW guy that wrote this is just like listening to this and is like, I wonder how atmosphere works. And he's like smashing his face into the desk right now. Like that's <laughs> not the point. That's not the point, you dipshits. <laughs> Having to order a new monitor from like the procurement department because <laughs> he's punched it repeatedly. Yeah. Peak, peak Warhammer discussion. How does <laughs> fat man in space atmosphere? <laughs> anyway, uh, what, what what else do we have? Anything else? Is is there more? We, I mean, we could easily be here for like another hour. There are <clears throat> a good number of human <clears throat> planets, but I feel like I feel like. <laughs> We, we've What's hit the atmosphere the, on the, the sweating ones, obese right? man <laughs> is the best place to stop. Fair play. Fair play. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think okay. happens when he has like a rumbly in his tummy? Is it just like catastrophic earthquakes across the entire planet? <laughs> a rumbly in his tummy. Do you think, the, do you think the like. Is dude sentient even? Like, is, is, or is he just like constantly asleep? Like. What even is this guy? What is this guy? <laughs> what is he- the core of the question? What even is this guy? <laughs> what, what is this guy? What is he? Can Do you he think talk? when he, if he like goes through a warp storm, it's like his shower? It's like ah, <laughs> cleansing. Does he eat? <laughs> yes. Like, what does he eat? Does he eat? Like, if he gets a rumbly well, in his tumbly, is it because he ate something bad? Like, wait, wait a minute. We're not asking the right questions here. What if the Tyranids invade this? Oh, the biomass oh. they could get from big guy in space. He thinks just like, can you just imagine? I feel like the dude would just get eaten alive by like a million bio titan ships. Oh, yeah. And, then, they and they'd be like, a feast. They'd be like tiny little like piranhas, like chomping on his on his love handles. <laughs> that is that. Oh, God. And, and, and then the, and then he would the scream wound and the blood that just flows out of that. Yeah. But but he would scream in pain. But because his head is the size of a normal head on the surface, it'd just be this very far away in the background. <laughs> like uh, 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 oh my god! Please end the episode. <laughs> and curiosity, is there any, anything else, or should we should we call it? That's that's. I don't know how to recover from that. I feel I feel like that's 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 the that's the that's the point. That's this the, has been excellent. a th- this has been everything I always want from a carry out episode. <laughs> I just don't know whether that's a good thing or not anymore. <laughs> My I just, face I just usually love. Usually hurts after Kirioth episodes, and I love that. <laughs> I just love the ingenuity, you know. <laughs> it, it's like you know when we read Lion Son of the Forest, and they had a, a giant moon <laughs> of all the bones of the planet's population <laughs> orbiting it, and it's just like, what a what a great like wow, that's diabolical. Good job, writers. And I'm thinking the same <laughs> yeah. thing here. The, like, the brazen bull just, planet. Yeah. Here is your employee of the month placard. Here are some vouchers for therapy. <laughs> well done. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Is is there a reason why all of the um, uh, uh, sir sir Mister Workshop employees uh, subsector five number fourteen? Um, is there a reason why all of the civilians on your demon planet were the names of your close family members? <laughs> here 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 is a uh, you know we we offer therapy in our in our um in our health insurance plan <laughs> this is my therapy you cannot simply call a great unclean one dad you need to go back and do something about this you can't publish that men will do literally anything besides go to therapy <laughs> <laughs> you cannot call this great unclean one dad <laughs> what is there a reason you're modeling your great unclean one instead of the plague flail to have a belt and it, oh, hitting this Jesus. plague bearer beneath oh, him. Oh, God. All right. All right. Let's uh, exit stage right. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Bye. I'll see you next week. <laughs>